Hi everyone, how are you? Hope you're doing well. If you haven't already, make sure you go grab your Bible so we can use it. Let's start with our prayer and pray together. Uh, dear Lord, we uh, thank you. Lord, we praise you. Uh, we love you so much. Um, thank you for all that you do for us, Lord, and for sending your son to die for us. I uh, pray that you would be with us and keep us focused on you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so we are looking at Jesus is alive. And last time for Easter, we looked at the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. And now we are going to see Jesus and how he taught these two disciples. Okay, so let's grab our Bibles and we're going to go to Luke chapter 24, verse 19. You ready? Let's go find it. And let's walk through our New Testament books as we head to Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Okay. And in chapter 24, verse 19. Okay. Got mine here. Let's read these verses together. And he said to them, what things? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Okay, let's watch our video and then we'll come back and talk about this. Two of Jesus' disciples were on their way to a village called Emmaus. They were talking about everything that had happened in Jerusalem when Jesus had been crucified. As they talked, Jesus himself began to walk with them. At this time, the men didn't recognize him. Jesus asked the men, what are you talking about? Haven't you heard what has happened in the last few days? One of the men asked Jesus. Jesus replied, what things? So the two men shared all that had happened. They explained that Jesus, a prophet who had spoken many things about God, had been handed over to the chief priests to be crucified. The men had hoped that Jesus was the one who was sent to save Israel. The men shared that this was not the end of the story. They explained that three days after Jesus had died, women from the group arrived early at the tomb where Jesus had been buried. But Jesus' body wasn't there. Instead, the women saw angels who told them Jesus was alive. Jesus listened intently to the disciples' story, and then he said, Didn't the scripture say that the Messiah would have to suffer before entering into his glory? Then Jesus taught the men everything in the scriptures that was written about him. When they came near the village, the men invited Jesus to stay with them for the night. As Jesus sat at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and gave it to the men. When they saw this, the disciples immediately realized that this man was Jesus. At that moment, Jesus disappeared from their sight. What? That's amazing! 
the disciples were amazed as well. In fact, they talked about how their hearts felt like they were on fire when Jesus had explained the scriptures to them. That very hour, the men got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found Jesus' 11 disciples and shared all that had happened on the road with Jesus. The men exclaimed, The Lord has certainly been risen from the dead, and he appeared to us on this very day. So what are some things we can see from this lesson? Well, we see these two disciples walking along the road, and they don't realize it, but Jesus comes up and joins them. And he asks what they're talking about. And they, they tell him about the crucifixion of Jesus and everything that happened and seeing the tomb empty. And they seem just unsure about everything. And so Jesus starts talking to them about the scriptures and what the scriptures say about him. And they don't realize that it's Jesus. And so they get to a place where they're going to um, they're going to have dinner and rest and they have Jesus stay with them. And Jesus breaks the bread and blesses it and gives it to them. And they realize that it's Jesus and Jesus vanishes from them. And they even said to themselves, did we not feel something when he was talking about the scriptures? And so they maybe they realized it a little bit. And they went back and they told the other disciples and the people with them what they had seen and what had happened. And they said, Jesus is alive. And the great thing about that is that is what gets us to heaven because the sin that separates us from God, when Jesus came and died on the cross and rose again and was alive and raised from the dead, that washed away our sins. And all we have to do is just admit that we're a sinner and it's nothing in our own power that we can do to get ourselves to heaven or to fix that sin. But we can believe, B, that Jesus came and died on that cross and rose again and was alive again. And that washed away our sins and allowed us to go to heaven. And then we can confess that. And that just means praying a simple prayer and talking to God and letting him know that we believe that and also telling others that we believe that. And that's the great thing is that God wants us to be in heaven and he fulfilled his promise when he sent Jesus to die for us and be the ultimate sacrifice and wash away our sins. And he wants us to be in heaven with him. So that's why he did that. Okay. So your challenge or activity uh, for this week is I want you, since the two disciples were walking with Jesus on the road, I want you to do uh, a follow the footprint activity. Okay. So around your house, um, or maybe even outside, if you want to um, get some of your family, your friends and be creative. I want you to find different ways to make footprints and leave messages with those footprints. Um, so maybe you would take some of your shoes, and leave them at different points around the house or outside, or maybe you would actually trace out your footprint um, or leave little footprint shapes, whatever you can think of. Um, I just want you to find a fun, creative way to uh, make some footprints and kind of lead it along a road around your house, around um, your yard, wherever it may be. And on each of those, I want you to put um, some messages. So sort of like our Easter eggs, uh, maybe you put the ABCs of salvation. Uh, maybe you tell them that Jesus loves them. Uh, maybe you write um, about the story, whatever it may be. I just want you to do some footprints with some really neat messages on them. Okay. And have fun together following those footprints and reading each of your messages as you go along. Okay. So let's look at our memory verse. We're back in Romans chapter five, verse eight. Okay, let's go find that. And let's walk through our books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Okay, and we're gonna be in chapter five, verse eight. Okay, let's read that together. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Okay. Well, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed it too. And I hope you have a great week ahead. I'll see you next time. Bye. And now, a special report from Hunt Burkleton. The Old 
old-timey days, back when humans were mole people who lived underground and ate dirt. Incorrect data. God sent his only son, Jesus, to the earth. He was different from all other people because he was perfect and never messed up. Correct data. But who was God's son, really? I'm here at Mooseberry Academy for the very, very, very gifted students, where I intend to get some answers. I'm investigative reporter Hunt Burkleton, and this is Hunt Burkleton Knows What's Really Going On with the Old Timey Days. What do you know about this Jesus from the old timey days? Well, I know that they didn't have like cool clothes or hairstyles back then, so Jesus talked about other stuff. Or whatever. Who cares about the old timey days anyway? In my book, How to Be an Evil Genius, I talk about the future, not the past. The past is great! That's when I did some of my best stunts. Kablammo! When it comes to Jesus, past, present, and future are all the same. Cause he's always been around, and he'll always be around. So Jesus is round, like a ball, or a pill bug, or my Uncle Rudy. Not round, around. Jesus was sent to Earth as a baby. In a giant space egg. Nope. Not in a giant space egg, he was born just like all of us, only with much greater purpose, to save us. From a giant space egg. No, from sin. We all have sin in our lives. But Jesus was born as a human, with the plan to be our Messiah. Miss I yeah. When something almost hits you in the eye, but misses, and you're happy about it. Not even close. Jesus has many titles. King, Father, Son of God, Son of Man. Messiah is our title for Jesus that means our promised Savior. He came to earth to save us from sin. He came to save us from sin. A noble purpose indeed. But what does this gift of life mean to us humans? What do you do once you've been saved from sin? I told you to leave me alone. Your bad reviews ruined my pet shop. Join me next week as my investigation continues. Until then, I'm Hunt Burkleton, and this is Hunt Burkleton Knows What's Really Going On. Get out!